from La Rumorosa, Baja California, Mexico. Welcome to the GCN show. Welcome to the GCN show. This week, should you or should you not try these at home? We attempt to give the definitive answer. Try to touch your face on the ground. We have a recap of the latest in the Wiggins Sky Saga with all of our usual segments and some big news. We are once again trying to raise money for World Bicycle Relief. Oh, yes. Hang on a minute, Dan. What on earth has that clip got to do with anything? You'll find out, Si. You'll find out. Seriously, mate. No one, no one needs to see that again. I'm not shaving anything, mate. This week in the world of cycling, we learned that cycling with headphones in still enables you to hear just as well as if you're inside a car, even if you don't have the stereo on. Very, very interesting research there from Ride Magazine. Although I think it's worth mentioning that you rely on your hearing an awful lot more on the bike than you do in the car. So for me, Jury's still out on riding with headphones. Mm, no definitive answer there. Not yet. We also learned this week that while Sai struggles to remount a moving cyclocross bike, He actually struggles also to stay on it to begin with. <laughs> You're on the wrong way, Si. Jokes. Oh! <laughs> yeah, that's not me. No, that's uh, that's just generic crash footage, isn't it? Sure, because we've got a second angle. Oh, He's got it. He's got it on camera. But I think the evidence has been tampered with. I mean, that is my voice, but that's still. You can't see that it's me. Fair enough, but we have a third angle sight this time in slow motion. Oh, no. yeah. He's got it. He's got it on camera. Oh, that's bad, <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, okay, that that is actually me. There is a full video to explain that crash uh, coming up very soon, so stay tuned. Now, not linked to riding around a Yorkshire Moorland on a cyclocross bike, but we have been thinking this week about things that you shouldn't do on a bike. Yeah, this was actually sparked by a video by our friends over at Eurosport. They were investigating that new sprinting position first adopted by Caleb Ewan. Clearly very aero, clearly very fast, but should you be trying it at home? No. I don't think you should actually. Now, the problem here is that it looks eminently doable. You know, it looks like anyone could have a try, but therein lies the problem because it actually relies on quite a lot of skill. It relies, importantly, on very safe roads and it also relies on a very safe peloton as well. So if people started doing this sprinting for town signs or mid pack at a local race, I think it could spell disaster. Definitely one best left for wide open, closed roads, if that makes sense. Uh, just about, I think. <laughs> if you fall on your face, it's not my fault. All right, what about this one? Another very fast aero position, the full through me. That's where you are descending whilst on your top tube and pedaling at the same time. Now, Dan actually found out that this was pretty fast using science. I do, but if you will remember, some actual science conducted on that same position suggested otherwise. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point, actually. Proper science done by the University of Eindhoven, if yeah. I remember correctly. Uh, regardless, this for me falls very much into the same camp as the Ewan in that you have to weigh out the risk versus reward factor. And actually, I think this next clip very much puts things into perspective. You're probably going to remember it. Four. Um, I do remember. In fact, it's hard to forget that yeah, clip, isn't it? So painful. Uh, I think the question that we have to ask ourselves really is how much of an idiot am I going to feel if this goes wrong and I crash? I think the answer to that is going to give you a good idea of whether or not you should try something out. Yeah, all right. Well, with that in mind then, what about this next one? So, super cool San Francisco-based shop and general cycling institution, MASH, regularly post videos that have you on the edge of your seat. And this recent one featuring Matt Ray shows some incredible skills. But, should you try it at home? Leaving aside the issue of riding backwards down a road wearing no helmet and with no brakes, I've got to say yes to this, mate. What? Yeah, seriously. So uh, I would, of course, wear a helmet and I would prefer to have brakes. But I actually spent several hours in my youth 
trying to learn how to ride a bike backwards. So I kind of have to say, yeah, try it at home. To be fair, I spent the vast majority of my pro career riding backwards, so I'm <laughs> highly skilled at that. Uh, what about this next one then? Something else you might remember from a few months ago. This is from Chris Atkrieg, and it is the guide. Amazing riding on a gravel bike there. Should you try it at home there, Dan? Well, you clearly shouldn't, based on some <laughs> recent and very compelling <laughs> evidence against it. But uh, yeah. in general, riding off-road is fantastic fun, isn't it? And if you've yep. got skills like Chris, it shows just what you can do on a bike. Yep, I agree. Although, a bit of practical advice, uh, I would say actually that uh, cross bikes and gravel bikes, they don't really like mega rocks. Mm. So uh, if you are going to venture off-road on your cross or your gravel bike, then aim for trails that are just a little bit tame for mountain bikes and then right. you'll absolutely love it. So your final answer on this one is yes and no. How does it feel being yes, sat on that fan fence there? So. Yeah, it's quite a pointy fence this one actually. I don't really like it. All right, what about this one then? The ultimate, don't try this at home. Ready? Should you? Yes. What? Huh? Wait, hear me out on this one. Clearly, those manoeuvres are just so dangerous that you yeah. would never even attempt to try it at home unless you had the required skills like they do. So if you do have those required skills, give it a go. Hmm. So what we're saying is, uh, don't try apparently simple but actually really dangerous stuff. But do try really difficult and apparently really dangerous stuff. Oh. Yeah, just don't try it at home, I think is the safest advice. In Fair all seriousness, though, no, we would like to hear your thoughts on the Froomey and the Ewan. Do they have a place out on the open road? Have you seen other riders try them Ooh. out on the open road in a group ride? Uh, let us know if you have in the comment section just down below. Yeah, and what were the consequences? Have you got any crash footage? If so, you know where to send it. Yeah, GMBN, bales and bales. They love that stuff. <laughs> Next week is World Bicycle Relief here on GCM with an aim to raise money for the charity. Now you might remember that Dan was out in Zambia the other week looking at the work being done by World Bicycle Relief, seeing exactly how and where the money that you donated is being used. Yeah, across the channel next week there will be four videos coming out for World Bicycle Relief. Uh, first up, we have an in-depth look at the Buffalo bike itself to find out why it is so unique. I also visit the headquarters of World Bicycle Relief in Lusaka itself to find out how they are assembled and even give a go at assembling a bike myself. Someone checked it over, did they? I think they just started again. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Then we've also got two videos actually following people that actually use those Buffalo bikes day to day. Firstly, a farmer who uses that bike to help carry out his daily work. And then also the story, a very poignant story of a student called Lizzie who now is able to ride the six kilometers to her school and back each day. Yeah, it's really moving stuff, I have to say. Uh, last year, you were very generous and you raised a total of £16,666. Uh, and for that, I shaved my hair off. Uh, thankfully, it's Matt and Sai who've drawn the short straw this year. And as they're about to find out, if we raise £25,000 this time around, they will cycle across central London wearing nothing but bungee smugglers, which are sometimes known to you as speedos. Yep. He's just found out. Uh... I guess as long as I'm not riding a tandem with Matt, then... Uh... It's a tandem. It's a really aero tandem as well, so you're very close together. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> Shall I go down at the front? No, maybe at the back. Oh, God. I don't know. You that can, sounds awful. You can draw straws again and decide at the time. <laughs> oh. Uh, right, okay. Um, now, in all seriousness, uh, the GCM page on the World Bicycle Relief website is now open. So please, let's start the ball rolling and get some donations going in. Uh, to put it in perspective, a Buffalo bike costs just $150. So you can see very clearly that any donation, no matter how big or small, is going to make a big difference. Mm. Uh, now, here's a clip which we made whilst over in Zambia uh, a few weeks ago. <laughs> Oh, 
So last year you were incredibly kind in donating enough money to raise 150 bikes for students over here in Zambia and other developing countries. And that's kind of the scale of it right in front of you here now. Uh, we've just been giving out a few of the bikes to the worthy recipients because they do have to earn their right to use a Buffalo bike. And on each contract, it tells you how many kilometers they have to normally walk to school. Uh, it varied between six and for one student girl, 17 kilometers. I mean, how much difference is it going to make be on two wheels coming to school over 17 kilometers versus walking I and mean, this is about as smooth as it gets. It's been quite emotional watching this celebration and the handover of some of the bikes to the students. It's amazing to see it firsthand and hopefully you will appreciate back at home just how much it means to them I and mean, you can see just from the smiles on their faces as they ride off. But the work isn't done. There are a whole host more schools around and about which need these bikes to help the students get to school on time or even attend in the first place. All donations will be very much appreciated and the details of exactly how to do it are in the description just below this video. It's now time for Cycling Shorts. Last week, the UK Anti-Doping Agency finally concluded their investigation into that mysterious Jiffy bag which was delivered to Team Sky back in 2011. Yeah, and it's not terribly satisfactory for anyone, is it really? Uh, they concluded that it was impossible to work out what was in the Jiffy bag because of a lack of medical records kept at British Cycling. Hmm. It did mean though that Wiggins could finally break his silence. He released a statement on his social media in which he expressed his disappointment that UK had left a question mark hanging over it despite there being no evidence. No. It's not over yet though, is there, because the General Medical Council, uh, which is the governing body that oversees doctors here in the UK, may now investigate on the medical side of things and they have greater powers to actually look into things like private medical records. So that's one possibility. And then there is also the uh, not insignificant matter of Shane Sutton. Yeah, his comments caused quite a stir last week, didn't they? Although taken in context, to be fair, they did make a little bit of sense yeah. in that if you could bring a rider back to 100% fitness and health through medication, you would do it where the rules allowed it. But yeah, in those headlines, it sounded really bad, didn't it? It did, didn't it? This one is definitely going to rumble on. If there's one thing to be learnt, though, other than one should probably keep adequate medical records, is that actually the legislation around TUEs does need to be looked at, doesn't it? Just so that the rules and our ethics actually match up yeah. to eliminate that ridiculous grey area that doesn't need to exist. Definitely. Uh, moving on then, I'm not sure si, if you saw last week, but a thousand bikes were found in a bunker over in Orange County in California. I did actually see so, that, yeah. Yeah, bunkers. So in the LA Times and police were moving on some homeless people and in doing so they stumbled across a hidden hatch and when they researched what was underneath it, they found this bunker. We say research, we lifted it up. Yeah, yeah, it was a thorough investigation, went down underground, found this place with a thousand bikes. So if you happen to have had a bike stolen in Orange County over the last few years, you might, just might, be reunited with it. Yeah, well that'd be cool. Uh, moving on though from well, fairly negative news surrounding TUE grey areas and stolen bikes to something definitely more positive, if you pardon the pun. Because a Canadian cyclist called Travis Streb has just hit his target for the year of climbing, wait for it, one million vertical feet. A million? A million vertical feet, wow. yeah. That's absolutely incredible, isn't it? Even more incredible is the fact that he actually did the majority of that climbing on the hill behind his house. Well, I say hill, it's actually Mount Seymour, so, you know, pretty sizable. But nevertheless, isn't that brilliant? And he actually raised $10,000 for charity whilst he was doing it. Fair play, Travis. Yeah. That is quite a feat of accomplishment, isn't it? See who did that. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. A million. Sorry, I just got my own joke. Million feet. Well done, Travis. Uh, meanwhile, some interesting reading back in the UK here last week from a survey conducted by Sustens. They are the charity, basically, who are in charge of the National Network of Cycle Paths and Roads. Anyway, the survey said that 78% of all people would like to have segregated cycle lanes, not just us cyclists. Yeah, really positive, that, not it? Although, weirdly, only 75% of people were happy for any money to be spent on segregated cycle paths. Mm. So there's 3% there, clearly, in cloud cookie land. Or well, maybe they're waiting for an anonymous donor, as is the case for the brand new Detroit Velodrome. Oh, I love this story. It's a good one, isn't it? I uh, really enjoyed reading this. So this new Detroit Velodrome, in Motor City itself, it has to be said, was funded entirely by one single anonymous donor. Yeah, brilliant, isn't it? Really short track, just 166 metres around, but it becomes just the third indoor velodrome in the whole of the US. Yeah, that's great news. What did make me chuckle though was the press release uh, that I read by 
Lexus, who are sponsoring, ironically, this indoor velodrome. And what they said is, we see cycling as a platform for reaching affluent millennials. Our research shows that millennials appreciate cycling, and it's actually, it is actually high on their hobby list. <laughs> actually high on their hobby list. Amazing what you can it, find yeah. out with research. Yeah, now I tell you what, mate. That is a good Detroit velodrome story, but it's not the best velodrome story to come out of Detroit. Uh, because it turns out there is a hidden outdoor velodrome called the Dorai Velodrome. Uh, hopefully I pronounced it right. It was built in 1969 and then fell into disrepair. And it was only found many years later by the Mower Gang. The Mower Gang. Yeah, seriously. This, the Mower Gang is in Lawn Mower Gang. Uh, they go around Detroit finding hidden parts of the city. They discovered the velodrome by using Google Maps, uh, and then they mowed it. Basically, they bring this stuff back to life, do a bit of gardening, and I just think it's absolutely amazing. High fives all around to the Detroit Mower Gang. Genius. Ride on? Yeah, ride on, guys. No, ride on mowers, presumably, not push mowers. Uh, Zwift have announced yet another new development in that you can now access it via Apple TV, uh, which means a number of devices that you can access Zwift with is getting bigger and bigger. Uh, so if you've got one, it's a very simple way of using Zwift on your TV. Yeah, also new products from Cyclic as well. So their Fly 6 and Fly 12 units combine smart cameras with lights, the idea being that they would then be the perfect dash cams for cyclists. And now we've got the next generation, the Fly 6 CE and the Fly 12 CE. Yeah, CE standing for Connected Edition, courtesy of the fact uh, they are now compatible with Ant Plus and Bluetooth. And the camera has also been beefed up as well in that it has a wider field of vision and it's at 1080p at 60 frames per second. Yeah, they're also lighter as well, lighter in weight uh, and lighter in brightness, as in brighter. Yeah, okay, lighter and brighter. The lights are dimmed, change of t-shirts, it can mean only one thing. And that is a very special GCN shop announcement because of course Black Friday is coming up this week. And so we figured we would do a special limited edition Black Friday range at a very special price. It's actually not just limited to Friday, but here all week. Hmm. First up, we have the t-shirts, modeled by Si and myself. Short sleeve and long sleeve with a reflective GCN logo. <laughs> Further to that, we have some GCN fan kits. Oh, First yeah. up, the long sleeve jersey held up there by Si. We've also got a short sleeve jersey here as well. They look very cool indeed. Uh, we have a technical t-shirt there. And in addition to those, we also have socks and caps in that special Black Friday black. Yeah. They're cool, aren't they? They yeah. look mega. Now, the sale starts today, which is Tuesday, if you're watching the show promptly, and Tuesday if you're not, if you see what I mean. Uh, but getting quick, because the sale ends the following Monday, so time is limited. Uh, head over to shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com or just click on the link. The cyclocross season continues, and at the weekend, we had the latest round in the World Cup series. The first ever time that it was held in Denmark, yeah. in Bogens, to be precise. I think it's uh, Boinse. Boinse, yeah. to be precise. It's closer to the correct pronunciation. Bogens, yeah. Apologies, <laughs> every Danish person and every other GCM viewer, in fact. Uh, now, as well as being a World Cup, it was also a great opportunity to preview what will be the 2019 World Championship yeah. course and what the riders found were loads of short, very steep climbs, a little bit of sea spray to contend with, and a lot of mud. Yeah, and in turn, that meant a lot of running. Look at him go. Running, not daintily tiptoeing down a hill with your bike on your back. I'd just fallen off. I was taking it steady, right? Yeah. Anyway, best in those conditions in the women's event was world champion Sana Khan, who took her second World Cup victory of the year uh, in front of an inform Helen Wyman, uh, who finished just nine seconds further back. Meanwhile, in the men's race, it Mathieu was... Mathieu van der Poel. How did you guess? It's oh, Mathieu yes. van der Poel continuing his unbeaten run in the World Cups this season, this being the fourth round. However, it was quite a close fourth affair. Uh, world champion there, Wout van Aert finished just eight seconds down, whilst two nights with a further second back in third. You see what I mean? Just about. Mm. The most important question though, Dan, where's Maud? What do you mean? Where's Maud? Captain, it's our new segment. <laughs> Basically, we're so worried that we put the curse on her after asking the GCM viewers to tell us how to pronounce her name because as we said at the time we were going to be pronouncing her name an awful lot this season because she was absolutely smashing it and now she's disappeared so where's more yeah we haven't had to pronounce it much since well you would have had to look quite hard for her over in denmark really because she wasn't there oh she decided to skip the fourth round of the world cup due to injury and illness and oh, now gosh. slips from fourth to eighth in the classification 
Don't worry, Maud. There is plenty of time to yeah. turn it round before the big races over Christmas and New Year and, of course, the World Championship. So we've got faith in Maud. Uh, right, back to Belgium, actually. Think of the home of cyclocross. But this was the Ghent Six Day, uh, which took place last week. I've got some great memories of the Ghent Six Day. I'd be surprised, Dan, if you've got any memories of the Ghent Six Day. Uh, but nevertheless... They, well, they come also for the sport, not only to drink beer, but they drink a beer also. I'm not sure what the others have been drinking. It was, as always, an absolutely cracking event. Won, this time, by a very popular duo of Kenny de Ketteler and Moreno de Pau. Probably powered, no doubt, by the two best names in pro cycling. <laughs> yeah, a dynamic duo. Uh, amongst other things, on their way to winning that event, they set a new record on the Ghent track for 500 metres. Uh, it took just 26.595 seconds to complete that 500 metres, which is an average speed of 67.7 kilometres per hour. Quite wow. incredible. And I think deserving winners, plural this week, of a GCN What is Bazooka? And we're also giving a what is week this week to young Thibaut Nice, who is offspring of greatest of all time, Sven Nace. He's putting out some serious power here without a bike in sight. Fair play. What is Bazooka for that young lad? Yeah, if you'd like to nominate yourself, actually, or somebody else for next week's viewer Wattage Bazooka, I don't think Thibaut's probably a viewer, but nevertheless, uh, use the hashtag what is Bazooka on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. Are you ready? It's time now for Hack. Forward slash bodge of the week. Kicking off things this week uh, is Lewis Corbett, who has sent in this, uh, which he made from the IKEA drawer unit, complete with shelves for helmets and shoes. I think that's rather neat, the way he's uh, fashioned that out of the drawer unit. Plenty of storage space as well. Yeah, that's good right. work. Have you only put that in because he's got a bike like yours? Yeah. Yeah, with the radioactive orange. Very nice indeed. Nice, mate. Right, next up, we've got this one, which I'm going to put it out there right now. I think that's a massive bodge. Winks uh, over on Twitter. Old box, bit of tape and a marker pen. Yeah. GCN hack. He's done some hacking, hasn't he? To get to where he's uh, ended up there. Yeah. <laughs> well, it keeps them all nice and tidy. Fair enough, which one's yeah. which, It's it? not like a neat tool board, but you yeah. know, yeah. It might be a prototype, let's give him the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> yeah. uh, next up from our friend, Louis Lemus. You met him recently, didn't you? I did, he told me how to pronounce his name. Yeah. Louis Lemus. 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 Still a bit wrong. <laughs> uh, anyway, he saw this out on the streets recently and we have no idea what to make of it or why he's got that bike the way he has. To be fair though, that is one cool looking bike and that's a serious hack. So fair play, thanks for sending in Louis. GCN hack. <laughs> right, next up we've got this one which I absolutely love. Uh, from Woeful Countenance on Instagram, he calls it the headwind neutralizer. He had to get a, a leaf blower home from work today. Uh, it's too bad the battery was dead, otherwise he'd have set a record time, yeah. so he thinks. And you know what? Can't, hard to argue with that, that is a hack. Could have been KOM's galore, couldn't it? It's a very neat road without any leaves on. Uh, next up, from Sol Adams, uh, when your lockout is broken, grab the first thing to your right-hand side. The customer clearly had a bottle top. Bodge. Well, That's I don't know, it's quite one. neat, that. It wouldn't yeah. lock it out. It fits but... nicely, I guess, but still. Yeah, all right, and then last one, uh, we've got this from the Svensation. Uh, it's a whole bottle uh, <laughs> turned into a mudguard. Is that really a mudguard? I'm not sure. I think that might be a bodge. Yeah. I, I don't think uh, Pete Tompkins from Crow is going to be quaking in his boots though. I think I, even I might hit my calf muscles on that too. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah. if you've got any hacks or bodges that you would like to share with us ready for next week's show, it, the hashtag for that is GCN Hack across the same social media. <laughs> Caption competition time now. This is last week's photo. <laughs> yeah, and the winner is going to get out a GCN Camelback water bottle. Who won, side? Oh, the winner was Chris Coates with this caption. And a lucky fan gets a souvenir. <laughs> nah. Very good. Uh, get in touch with Chris I like uh, via Facebook with your address and we'll get this GCN bottle out to you ASAP. This week's photo is this one of Alberto Comstor, newly retired, of course, having done his second final race. Take it away, Si. <clears throat> After all that time, it turns out that Alberto was actually a lousy shot. You know the whole <coughs> pistolero thing? Yeah, 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 I get it. I get yeah. it. So, uh, like, if you can do better than Sai, moving on quickly, uh, let us know in the comments section down below with your caption. 
Before we get on to what's coming up on the channel this week, we should start with a few of our favourite comments from last week. Uh, beginning with this one from JC Boulet underneath the Winter Riding Mistakes video. Uh, he says, from Canada, GCN's winter riding videos look kind of cute. Like a bunch of fourth graders putting on a production of Hamlet. Good autumn riding tips there, just a month late by our weather. Uh, yeah, and it, it seems like the division between Canadian and UK winters was also quite stark in the comment section under last week's GCN show because in Hackle Bodge, we featured a bike that had a lawnmower fused to the head tube and a snow shovel in front of that and a salt grinder mounted onto the top tube. Now we wondered out loud what that might be for. First of all, Simon Lewis from the UK suggested that it was indeed a lawnmower and the salt grinder was for killing slugs. Uh, but then Randy stepped in from Canada. He said, I live in snowy as hell Canada and the bike lawnmower shovel salter seems like something that could be utilized. Uh, he said that where the Snow shovel doesn't manage to clear everything. The lawnmower would act as an ice mulcher. I didn't even know that was a thing, Dan. And then the uh, salter could finish off the job. Uh, he basically said, it seems like the person who made this is a genius. Uh, all in a great bike. And I actually stopped the video in order to comment. Yeah. So yeah, fair play, there we go. Uh, so should we deem that a hack then now? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. It's, it's being patented as uh, you speak. Right, what is coming up on the channel? Incidentally, on Wednesday, winter hacks for you. <laughs> Should we say winter well, hacks? Or maybe autumn, or it's like full <laughs> hacks uh, coming up for you on Wednesday. Uh, then on Thursday, we've got our top 10 Christmas present suggestions for cyclists. And then as ever on Friday, it is Ask GC Anything. Yeah, Saturday, we're taking a little break from pro bikes. We're back in the kitchen. Oh yeah, with top chef and top bike rider Hayden Groves. And then on Sunday, I went to look at the Tektro TRP factory when I was over in Taiwan. Have we mentioned that this week? Not yet. Uh, and that is an absolute belt, a brilliant, brilliant factory to check out. And then Monday, it's the maintenance set. And on Tuesday. Welcome to the GCN show. show. For this week's Extreme Corner, we are in Switzerland for the Red Bull Veloducks. Uh, coming up is a video from Claudio Calori, who is famous for his downhill mountain bike World Cup previews. This time, he's trying to get to grips with urban cyclocross. Hey, this should be a cycling race, not a running race. I don't know how my scepter works. Oh, my teeth are coming loose. Ah. Since I'm a downhiller, I am not allowed to. Whoa! Wow! Crazy f I guess this would actually be quite fun if you were in some sort of shape. Oh, that looks good fun. I it think. does actually look really good. You know, Fabian Cancellara was at that event was as well. He? Yeah. How did he get on? Don't know. There's no footage of Fabian. Uh, riding down steps, unfortunately. Uh, right, unfortunately, that is the end of the GCN show for this week. Do make sure you give it a big thumbs up, as always, and also subscribe to GCN. To do that, it's completely free. Just click on the globe. Mm. A couple more videos coming up for you now. Firstly, Sai, just down here, taking a tour of the Elite Factory over in Italy. And secondly, just down here, is my look at my own bike, a Trek Imonda SLR disc. Only cycling brand with a uh, blast furnace. Really? Yeah. I haven't watched your video yet. I should what? click on it now. I'll watch yours then.